Magnetism, why Ken's wrong. Magnetism is one of Ken Wheeler's most intense obsessions. Find out why the Theoria Apophasis creator is wrong about magnetism and why experts in the field view him with derision. Magnetism fascinates people. The attraction and repulsion we see when we play with magnets feels both magical and compelling. Correctly understanding how magnets work is more difficult than people realize. We couldn't do it until scientists acquired a detailed understanding of both relativity and quantum mechanics. Electrons have magnetic properties scientists call spin. Atoms have an overall spin based on the net spins of all their electrons. As Nobel laureate Richard Feynman explained in his famous 1983 BBC interview, when an object becomes magnetized, quote, all the electrons are spinning in the same direction. They all get lined up and they magnify the effect of the force that it's large enough that you can feel it at a distance. But it's a force that is present all the time and is a basic force. This elegant, empirically proven explanation poses a threat to Ken Wheeler. He insists in the face of all facts and evidence that electrons, quantum mechanics, and relativity can't exist. Kentucky Ken claims to be the first human being on earth to uncover magnetism and how it works. He seems to mean this literally and to be completely sincere about it, calling it one of the greatest secrets of nature. The angry photographer has self-published a book entitled Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. It purports to explore the nature of magnetism with regards to the true model of atomic geometry and field mechanics by means of rational physics and logic. He bases his geometric magnetism model on two shapes, the torus, the donut, and the hyperboloid, the hourglass. His diagram may help. The Theoria Apophasis host tells us the torus is the magnetic part of the field, the hyperboloid represents the dielectric, and the disc in the center of the diagram is something he calls the plane of inertia. The angry photographer claims that the two shapes are negative images of one another. They're not. He claims that when combined, the two shapes form a sphere. They don't. Science tells us that there's no such thing as a dielectric field or a plane of inertia. A magnetic object's physical shape determines the shape of its magnetic field, so it's not necessarily donut-shaped. Ken Wheeler seems to have come up with these geometric shapes by tinkering with a novelty device called a ferrocell. If we hold a magnet up to a ferrocell, the illuminated fluid produces all sorts of intricate optical patterns that resemble spirograph drawings. These optical patterns are due to reflections off the iron filings and the viscosity of the fluid, so they don't accurately represent the magnetic field or its flux. Lori Gardy of Western University's Robarts Research Institute has studied the ferrous cells patterns and reproduced them digitally. As she explains in her research paper, computer simulations were used to demonstrate that the interesting light patterns as seen in the ferrous cell are primarily caused by light reflections off the needle-like filaments that form and align with the magnetic flux lines of the magnet when placed in the vicinity of the ferro lens. The central flaw underlying Ken Wheeler's ideas about electromagnetism is his belief in the ether. Charles Proteus Steinmetz is one of the field theory pioneers that the angry photographer refers to as gods. He had this to say about the ether. The mistake which led to the hypothesis of the ether was that wave motions were the only waves known at the time when the wave theory of light was proposed, and so the light wave was also considered as a wave motion, and the question asked, what moves in the light wave? And this moving thing was called ether. Since that time, we have become familiar with waves which are not wave motions, but merely periodic phenomena, thus the Alternating current is a wave, but nothing moves in it. Thus, we speak of waves of temperature, etc., without meaning any material motion. 
The radio waves and light waves are electromagnetic waves, that is, periodic variations of the electromagnetic field in space. Ken Wheeler desperately wants to believe in the ether. In his mind, everything is a disturbance or perturbation of the ether or counter space or the dielectric in various forms and modalities. Kentucky Ken doesn't embrace these ideas for scientific or objective reasons. His devotion to the ether stems from his metaphysical belief system. The angry photographer describes himself as a hardcore neoplatonic Platonist. As such, he's passionately devoted to a belief system called emanationism. Emanationists believe everything in our universe emanates from a single, abstract, indescribable one or absolute. The laws of physics and ultimately the everyday world around us are emanations from this impersonal but fundamentally good ground of all being. That's why the Theoria Apophasis host is so fiercely committed to his notions of the ether, counter space, the dielectric, and the plane of inertia. In his mind, they're his link to the perfect spiritual realm and his future life in the great beyond. He's as fanatical about the ether as any fundamentalist who takes scriptures absolutely literally. Of course, nature is under no obligation to make sense to the angry photographer. There's another peculiar aspect to the Theoria Apophasis host's ideas about magnetism. They don't seem to have any practical consequences. This supposedly clearer understanding of how magnets work doesn't seem to lead to more powerful magnets or better ways to produce them. There don't seem to be any new applications for technology involving magnetism resulting from his theory at all. In fact, this ether-based model doesn't seem to change anything whatsoever in the realms of science or engineering. It appears to make no difference to our daily lives whether we believe it or not. So it's superfluous. Ken Wheeler is fond of saying if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. In his case, it's more apt to say if all you have is the ether, everything looks like a magnet.